On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're continuing our player reviews, closing them out with our last handful of players. And tonight, we're taking a look at Braden Point. You're Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Locked On Lightning. On today's episode, we're talking about Braden Point's season in review, another 40-goal year for Pointer. Time to count him among the elites? I think we do. We'll talk about that as well as, as well as we wrap up our segment as always with some expectations for the upcoming season but before we get to any of those topics i want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by fanduel make every moment more right now new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's two hundred dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started so we're getting into the home stretch of our player Player reviews. We did Andre Vasilevsky yesterday. If you didn't check out that episode, please go ahead and do so. Um, this week, so tonight we're doing obviously Braden Point. Tomorrow we will be doing Victor Hedman, Cooch on Thursday, and then Stamkos on Friday to wrap things up. And then afterwards, we will be starting our 20th anniversary celebration of the Lightning winning their first Stanley Cup. Uh, where we will be going not only throughout the course of the rest of June as well as possibly into um, probably September because how we're going to be doing it is we're going to be going and, and looking over the entirety of that playoff run, and I mean game by game. And you could follow along with us with um, on YouTube because we'll be that's where we're getting all our games from. So uh, make sure to tune in, tune in for that next starting next week. So, Brandon Point, his season was one that I think a lot of us, or or most of us, um, had a lot of anticipation for, because in 22-23, played a full season, 51 goals, 95 points, phenomenal year, right? That's where you figure after all those years of just being plagued by injuries, shortened seasons, all of that. Um, it 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 was one of those things where we saw it in the playoffs. We knew what he had. Now it was time to kind of bring that momentum that we usually see him pick up in the playoffs, put it into an 82 game regular season and turn into the player that we knew he was all or, or slowly starting to become over the years. And that's one of the things that I think we could all agree on is it, it's so, you know, it's one thing when you get a player, whether you sign for him, sign him or trade for them. And they're great right off the bat. It's one of those things, but I think it's, I think we could agree. It's a little bit more satisfying when those players are homegrown, the Anthony Sorelli's, the Braden points, the Nikita Kucherov's, Steven Stamkos, um, but more so like the points and, you know, the, 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 the Sorelli's, um, and even Cooch, you could even put them in there where, you know, they weren't, even though yes, point had 32 goals in his second season. Um, I don't think any of us really knew how good he was going to be, or someday he was going to be a 50 goal scorer. Um, and, and that's the thing that I think that is most satisfying about just seeing him produce like this, not only on back-to-back -back years, but just over the course of a season as well, because, and we'll talk about a lot about this in our second segment, how really we, we all knew what he was. And all right, first season, 82 games, like I said, 51 goals, 95 points. Awesome. This season, 81 games, 46 goals, 90 points. A little off on points, a little off on goals, but satisfying nonetheless. And, and the thing that really stuck out to me from this, uh, this season 
for him was was the game winning goals. Um, how many game, how many meaningful goals he scored? Because it, it is very possible. I mean, we I, I'm sure if you look at maybe Austin Matthews and and you know I just I'm not saying necessarily him, but a, another guy across the league, or maybe a couple of other guys across the league that do score a ton of goals. You know, I I would be I wouldn't be surprised if you get a couple of guys that are that compilers, you know, guys. And, and I do weigh game winning goals a lot when it comes to the high goal guys. I'm sure, you know, not to not to make any comparison here, but you look at Wayne Gretzky and you look at the amount of goals he scored over the course of his career versus how many of those were game winning goals. Um, the number is possibly very close. The numbers are very close to each other, possibly. I don't know. Um, but but with Braden Point, you, you know, oftentimes because he plays on a team full of superstars and all that, he does kind of get overlooked and and which is wild to think about because he he really is himself a superstar. And I think that, you know, if if Kucherov doesn't have the season he has this year, maybe Point gets a little bit more of the spotlight and is spoken about a lot more nationally. But this season, I, I what really impressed me from him, other than I, I thought just his passing got so much better, even though he did match his career high for assists in consecutive seasons. I thought that, well, not his career high because he had 51, but he had back-to-back seasons of 44 assists, which was is pretty impressive. Um, but but I thought that his 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 vision on the ice just got so much better. Um, oftentimes we don't talk about that a lot with with guys that put up 45 plus goals in a season. Um, very few times really do we talk about how well they're able to distribute the puck. And, you know, one of his things though, that I think really jumps out to you other than the passing is just his positioning. Um, we saw it numerous times, countless times really this year, uh, his ability to almost sneak past the defense get in deep and sit almost sit there in the slot or or at least take the puck and skate into the 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 low slot and be able to score from down there which it's crazy when you think about it because he he's just so lethal from down there to where you almost wonder why opposing teams don't bottle him up and uh I really think that that's really one of his biggest strengths. And I think the reason why he's able to score so many goals, um, like Nikita Kucherov, I think that what point has brought this year and we're really has started to see him. And this goes hand in hand with his passing ability. It's really his ability in general, whether he has the puck or not to be able to make everybody on the ice with him better now that doesn't always translate into goals or whatever or even wins for that matter but to have another guy like that on the ice um with Nikita Kucherov a guy who does basically the same exact thing as him but on just a whole nother level than point it, it it's nice to see a guy such as Braden Point be able to do that um the one thing I would have liked to have seen more out of him this season and I think this is just nitpicking a little bit, considering the guy, like I said, 46 goals, 90 points. I want to see him utilize a little bit more of his speed, uh, like what we have seen out of him in years past. Um, kind of like that that Connor McDavid S kind of rushes up the ice, what we, you know, what McDavid is mainly fam- famous for and notorious for. We've seen that from Braden Point numerous times over the years, and and I thought we didn't see it as much this year, and I think that was something maybe his game lacked. 
at times. We saw the rushes, but not so much the chances being converted into goals or even into points. And and I think that is not so much more on point. I think it's more so opposing teams being wary of that and kind of a situation as an opposing team kind of picking your poison. Would you rather be beat on the rush or beat on a cycle? And I think any team, including yours truly, any anybody would probably be, be preferred to be beaten on a cycle. Uh, Cause then that just means generating, you know, getting in front of shots and, and, and generating traffic to, you know, try and get a, rid of that in front of your goaltender. Um, but overall phenomenal season from him. Really? Uh, I, I really think that this is a season that is not only something that you could replicate very easily with his skill set. Um, it's something that I think we could very much look forward to. I know I'm jumping the gun with, you know, while we do our expectations in the last segment of the show, but it, it really is something that I think that we should all come to expect almost on a yearly basis. I'm not saying 45 goals on a yearly basis. That's insane. If that happens, that's great. But I'm not going to sit here and kill him for it if, if if we don't get anything near that. If he gets the... If, I think at this point in his career, I think we could safely say that Braden Point is a solid 40-goal scorer, close to the 90-point guy, uh, around 90-point guy. Um, I think that even though he does bring, and I'll end it on this, I think even though he does bring a certain type of different flair to the game than what we see from Kucherov, I think they the similar uh, produ- the, there is a similar production, obviously, there. Uh, of course, obviously, Kucherov being kind of more of a, a point getter and being more of a an assist machine. I think do I I do think point can get there. I don't know if it'll it'll get to the level of 120 assists or even more than that. But but I think that though, I think the ceiling for him in terms of assist in the future, uh, if that's an area of his great his game that he continues to grow and focus on. Because the goals will come. He's just that talented. I mean, I think that we could agree to a certain extent that he can almost put up 40 goals in his sleep. That's just how good of a scorer he is. But I think that in terms of assist, I think that maybe something uh, his ceiling could be maybe close to 75, maybe 80, something around there. Maybe I'm a little or, or maybe a little lower. Let's let's maybe put 50 to 60. That's probably more of a feasible um goal to to attain so let me know in the comments below how you felt about him this season uh what what were your takeaways from him uh my grade for him for this season is going to be a solid a uh just because you, it it's one of those things where Braden point can have a season like he did especially obviously with the season that kucherov had sneak under the radar basically in the hockey world and just have a quiet 45 plus goal season close to, you know, and 90 points. So let me know in the comments below, what was your grade for him this season, as well as your takeaways and coming up in just a little bit, we're going to have that yearly discussion, which we always have. I feel like with Braden with, or, or about (laughs) Braden point, he's not here. I'm sorry, but about how is it time to consider him among the elites in the NHL? We'll talk about that. Coming up in just a little bit, but first, we're going to talk about our first sponsor on today's show, and that is our friends over at FanDuel. Now, listen, summertime means baseball, people. The NBA Finals concluded last night, but guess what? You still have live action bets that you could bet on with the Stanley Cup Final tonight. Hopefully, the Oilers could extend the series. Uh, They're up 4-2 heading into the third period right now, and you also have baseball. I mean, you, you also have tennis you also have the olympics coming up so you have plenty to bet on and you could do it all at FanDuel right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet that's 200 bucks you could use to bet on everything from the Consmive trophy winner to the money line of the Stanley Cup final uh to how many points Connor McDavid could get on any given night uh, as well as baseball you know do you think you know bet bet on the raise money line until the cows come home um you could bet it on all of it at fanduel.com so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer 
bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So as always, real quick, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel there. Drop a comment below. Let me know your takeaways from this season when it comes to talking about Braden Point. And also, you can find more of my work over at boltbythebay.com. I put out a article last night, a little bit before the episode about Vasilevsky, about Andre Vasilevsky, his upcoming season. We talk, I talked about that, uh, what we should expect out of him and, and how that could happen in terms of him keeping his elite form. So check that out, my work over at boltsbythebay.com. So the you the normal conversation we have been having, I think over the last two summers for the most part, definitely last summer, I think we may have gotten into it the previous summer. But since it Braden Point has been able to carry his playoff like crazy performances that we have seen from him really just since 2020 it we we have to talk about it because a i mean it's he's due to have that conversation be put in that conversation uh but also because i i just feel like like i alluded to before he doesn't get i think enough love nationally because of the other names that are on this team, Victor Hedman, Andre Vasilevsky, Steven Stamkos. And he kind of just falls by the wayside. And I'm pretty sure that there are some people that think that his performance and his numbers are a direct correlation of playing with Kutrov, which I think is a bunch of BS. But because if you actually watch the guy play, you know, it's not all that, you know, a lot of it is talent. But the conversation needs to be had again about where or should this guy belong in the conversation of elite players in the NHL. And when I mean elite players, I'm just talking about strictly skaters. You know, goaltenders are a whole different list and situation and conversation to be had. And when you look at the top, and when I say elite players, I think of top 10, top 15. If you want to stretch it to 15, go ahead. Top 10, I think, is is a conversation um, that is more feasible. So when you look at the top 10 players in the league, and I'm not listing these guys really in any any real order but when you're talking about top 10 in, in the NHL you can follow along because on, on NHL.com just look at the stats uh, for players when I think of the top 10 players in the league and I'm not really listing this in any order I think of Kucherov of course McKinnon and McDavid depending on who you talk to those three are interchangeable. Um, Pasternak, Matthews, Dreisaitl. We definitely got to put JT Miller in that conversation just because of the year he had. William Nylander is definitely in that conversation. Cal McCarr, Quinn Hughes. And I think definitely we could probably count Braden Point in the top 15. Top 10. Probably as well. I mean, like I said, it it, it really just it, it honestly depends on who you're talking to. I think if you're talking to someone that is very just closed minded, somebody who just watches strictly their team, they're going to tell you straight to their face, your face and my face that Braden points and not a top 15 player. And I think that's just ridiculous. But if you talk to someone who has common sense and has some sort of awareness as to what's going on in the NHL landscape in terms of across the league and players and all that, I think we could sit here and agree that 
a hundred percent. Not only is he a top 15 player, but he's a top 10 player. And I think that he does have the potential maybe a couple of years from now. If he continues on the trajectory that he's on, we could probably, we might be able to sit here and talk about him being top five in the league. I know that sounds a little outlandish to some right now, and it might sound like a little bit of recency biased as well as team biased as well, because this is a lightning podcast. If you haven't picked up on that already, but you look at the guy play, if you watch this guy for 82 games and you watch what he does at times on his own, when he's playing on the same line with the guy who's probably going to win MVP this year, the case could be made that this guy is not only a superstar, I mean, that much is evident, but that he is 100% elite and that he is definitely one of the, more of the scary players. And and you talk to some of the greatest minds about around the game and, you know, they and, and if you don't if you don't read any of those articles or whatever, listen to those podcasts, just watch a lightning game on ESPN, watch a lightning game on NHL Network, on national television. Nine times out of 10, whenever they're talking about keys to the game for a lightning game and you you could go to any podcast as well. Any NHL podcast it doesn't even have to be locked on lightning. When you're talking about the keys to the game and players to watch in a game that the Lightning are playing, the names that the name that always pops up is Braden Point because he has, like we've stated on on episodes past, almost that that game breaker like plays in him that I alluded to before when I was talking about. At certain times, he has those McDavid like rushes down the ice. To where he catches the opposing team napping, especially on line changes, and will score. And I think that that alone in itself, that ability to do that, while also simultaneously playing physical, being able to pass and distribute, being able to score from down low, uh, essentially almost anywhere on the ice. That makes him one of the more dangerous players that the league. It seems as though the league hasn't picked up on that yet. If they have, they they're not talking about it out loud. So, in summation, I really think he does belong in the elite conversation. He definitely belongs in the top ten conversation. Uh, like I said, a little bit ways away from where we could before we could really have a serious conversation about him being top five in the league. Um, also that might not be something that if he doesn't reach top five may not necessarily be his fault considering how stacked this league is um, with, with some of the other players that are around and playing, um, you know, the Artemi Panarins, the, the, the Kareli Kaprizovs, those kind of players as well. Like the Kaprizovs, the guy is still very much young in his career. Um, already having a great career out in Minnesota, um, other players as well as like Philip Forsberg, guys that are kind of in the same boat as well, where they don't play in a market that gets a ton of national love from the hockey world. So people just have this misunderstanding that thinking just because they haven't, they're not as familiar with the names or the faces that this guy doesn't deserve the accolades or the the amount of praise that he should get. So let me know in the comments below. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and and play the the victim card that people don't respect Tampa Bay as a hockey city kind of thing. I don't believe that's the case. I just believe really what it comes down to, and I'm being really brutally honest here, is that it, it seems as though, especially when people have talked about Braden Point, and I'm not I'm talking about people online people that claim to know the game that they have selective memory that they 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 tend to make more excuses as for why he's not as to when looking at the stats as to maybe making a distinction as to maybe or why he can so let me know in the comments below i mean is he top 10 i believe so 
is he close? Is he higher than 10? I think if out of 10 players, honestly, just because the league is so stacked, he would have to be 10. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think he's higher? Do you think he's lower? And and coming up in just a little bit, we're going to wrap things up as we always do with our player segments with a little bit expectations for the 2024-25 season. But first, we're going to wrap things up with our last sponsor on today's show, and that is our friends over at Policy Genius. Now, a lot of life is unpredictable, but a good life insurance plan gives your family a financial safety net to protect against some of the unknowns. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It makes choosing the right policy for your family easy and quick. With Policy Genius, you could find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you easily compare your options from America's top insurance in just a few clicks. Their award-winning agents can even walk you through the process step-by-step. Step. Your work-life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius has no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. They have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. So get the peace of mind by finding the right life insurance with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. So one last time, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen on today's show. Go ahead and follow us on our social media pages at LO underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y-D-8-N-K. Uh, like I said, if you want to follow more of my work, go on over to boltbythebay.com. Uh, I wrote an article the other day about Andre Vasilevsky, his upcoming season. I haven't decided the next topic for mine. I'm working on a few right now. Um, I mean, I probably will have to write one about Braden Point now. So keep an eye out for that. Um, you could always find the latest articles from there on my Twitter page at Danky Dank, D N K Y D 8 N K. So, real quick, what are expectations for the 2024 25 season for Braden Point? Um, really, as the first one, as with really all players that we've talked about here on the show, uh, healthy. You got to stay healthy. I, I, I think a, with a lot of the players that have proven over the last couple of years, what they could do as long as they still stay healthy. I think really you could just look forward to whatever the previous year has been. Um, as for next season for Braden point, if I really had to put a number on how many goals, like I said before, I think he's definitely a 40 goal scorer as to what his ceiling might be, might be. Obviously right now it's 51. Can he get past that? I just think it really depends on what's going on around him. I It really depends on how Kucherov is playing, if the team decides to kind of lean on point more than Kuch. Uh, it depends on especially how this roster is being built, honestly, this offseason. And I hate to use that for almost all the top players, which I will for the most part this week, just because that that really is the facts right now is that we don't know. We don't know what this team is going to look like in September and October. And that is kind of the nerve wracking thing. And a lot of people don't realize that is is and it, it doesn't just affect the depth players. It affects the big time players as well. Uh, not having the right team around you does affect your stats. And I think that, you know, if, if Julian Brees boss, if, if he just mails it in this offseason and we just don't see a good team on paper because most times a, a not so good team on paper, a mediocre team on paper. I feel like most of the time we don't get a overperformance. I mean, if we do, it's very short lived overperforming teams can't sustain an 82 game season and subsequently a playoffs. I mean, it, it's really, you know, not a make it till you fake it kind of league. You know, the league is just 
too strong now. This division is too strong. Boston's going to continue to get better. Florida, regardless if they're the defending Stanley Cup champions or not, uh, they're going to continue to get better. Uh, Toronto is looking to retool, especially with, you know, at goaltender. So that's going to be difficult. Ottawa is going to continue to get better. The Red Wings are going to be a playoff team next year. Uh, and the Lightning can't, f- they really can't afford to fall behind. And so really, like what has also been the theme of some of these player reviews is setting up your players to be in the best position possible. Um, if, if Julian Brees-Bosk comes out this offseason and doesn't really do much of anything, and you really can't lay it at the feet of the players, you know, if, if, if but I, I do feel like Brandon Point will get his stats. I, I think he will be a 90 point guy. I do believe he'll get a, he'll, he'll be a 40, 40 goal scorer at minimum. Um, I think if he opens up his passing game a little bit more, um, I, I think that definitely that will be a huge help on that first line. Uh, with Kucherov and whomever they decide to put up there down the middle, I hope it's I hope it's Sorelli. I hope it's Sorelli. Um, if Stamkos does come back, we definitely will see time, on, especially on the power play between those three guys that I mentioned. Uh, so that will definitely help Braden Point in terms of points as well. Uh, and and the last thing with all of that, he just has to stay playing physical. He's always had an edge to his game, and he's just gotten better and better with that every single year. So it's just one of those things where it, it, it's really with, when it comes to Braden point, you know, it ain't broken. So let's not try to fix it here um, and just build around these guys in the off season. So tomorrow we'll be talking about Victor Hedman. So make sure to tune into that and you can uh, tune into that and make sure that you're up to date on it. As soon as the newest episode drops by hitting that notification button, wherever, whatever platform, you listen or choose to watch us on. So in the meantime, that's been it for this episode of Locked on Lightning, part of Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you in the next one.